man. Jason. <clears throat> what are you doing? Hey, man, if you're any kind of fucking trouble, man, you better let me know, dog, because I will come to the rescue. I don't know, man. I'm, I, when I seen you guys, whoever that fucking guy was, I have an eerie feeling, bro. I really do. That's why I called you. It's been bugging me. Since I've fucking seen you. Let me tell you something. You're an adult. You know what you're doing, but if you're in any trouble, you need my help. You better fucking call me, motherfucker. Can you hear me? Something ain't right. I know when something ain't right, man. I seen it, bro. I ain't fucking stupid, man. Let me tell you something. My fucking uncle sold drugs to the fucking... fucking Mexican mafia and the Hells Angels. He was cooking for those... You know, I ain't even tripping on that, dog. If you're in any trouble, you come let me know, motherfucker. You better, Richie, man. Something ain't right, man. Something ain't right. <laughs> I can't believe it's been 14 years, man. I love you, Jason Garfield. I can't stop thinking about this guy, man. He's my brother. Rest in peace. And I'll 
I'll never forget you And I'll never forget you Cause I can never forget you Jason Michael Garfield was a one-of-a-kind, once-in-a-lifetime friend. Hanging out with him was definitely a pleasure. There were never any dull moments. I met him when I was 13, and he was also 13. We were into the same music, and we were both naturally talented, musically. It was almost correction. It was perfect. Steve and I both played guitar, and I had a pretty shitty drum set. I could keep a beat, but only at certain tempos. Jason could really play like a pro. He made my trash can looking drum set sound like the heavens were crashing down on us. Maybe I'm exaggerating a bit, but he made them sound pretty damn good. Jason was the kind of guy I wasn't used to hanging with, so I had to really adjust. He was a wild kid. He's been in, he's been in the hall, youth programs, like the kind of kid parents and most of other kids were scared of. But over the years, I really calmed him down quite a lot. And on the other hand, Jason taught me not to take any shit from anyone. It was really cool the way all three of us were the same, me, Steve, and Jason. We didn't even have to talk. We didn't have to talk to each other at all to understand exactly what the other was thinking. He had this way about him that was very stern, like you couldn't break him down. But if you knew him, it was quite the opposite. He was a very loving and caring person. When my hair was long, he used to tell me that if I didn't cut, cut it, he was going to kick me out of the place we lived in together. He would say there would be hair in his food and I would hardly be there. Now I know he just wanted me to present myself better, always looking out for me. Once I had to go away for three months into a program and I was expecting to have to move my stuff out and Jason said, bro, Go do what you have to do. Don't worry about the rent. I'll take care of it. And when you get out, your room is still here. This is your home. <laughs> Not many people in this high-stressed world of bills and chaos would do that. God bless you, my brother. The last time I saw Jason was July 4th, 2002. We hung out down at the uh, Vallejo Yacht Club. I still remember our last um, words to, to each other before I left. Jason said, right on, bro. I had fun, and I said, yeah, I'll call you later. Then he said, I love you, bro, and I said, I love you too, and we hugged. It was almost like we both knew and were saying farewell. Rest in peace. <laughs> 